Getting out after a snowstorm, especially one of this size, often harder in the outer boroughs, right? Yes, joining us live now is Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, the latest on the storm and how it's affecting his area. Good morning, Bro uh, Borough President. Hey, good morning. How are you, you doing? Good to see you this morning. And it's, it is snowing out yes. there, trust me. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. referencing uh, meteorologist Barbara Miranda's um, uh, report there, Brooklyn could expect anywhere between 14 to 18 inches of snow. So how are you guys preparing for that? Yeah, and I am surprised it's just that amount. Uh, I already saw last night um, when I was out there, I realized how it was growing so rapidly. And uh, then this morning, uh, I saw that it's, it's, it's pretty deep. And so uh, the city is really prepared. Uh, we're coordinating, Len folks know, my whole staff, you know, we, we all should you know, take precautions, stay home if you could do so. Uh, let our um, emergency responders do their job. And, you know, hopefully we can, you know, get past this as well as possible. The pandemic as well. So like a shelter, for instance, may look and feel a little different if people are out in the cold or lose power. So if people do lose power, if there's flooding issues, what do you recommend? Uh, the, uh, the first thing to do is let's get past the storm and, you know, reach out to, of course, uh, Con Edison. And, you know, we have an amazing uh, first responder team, the um, NYPD, EMS, and us, a lot of the uh, first responders to these crises. You know, while we're home and others are home safely, there's a entire crew of New Yorkers who are out there uh, making sure that they still respond to any medical needs or try to get these streets as clean as possible. But the job is easier uh, if we are not in their way. Mm. That's the most important thing. Right. People should stay home during this time. Absolutely. And as residents do prepare for this incoming storm, what, what resources should they be looking out for? Uh, uh, no more. Uh, I'm hoping yesterday everyone went out uh, to, you know, get those need items they need in their households uh, because we're going to buck. We're going to be bunking down for a little while. Right. I mean, we're all used to doing it because of uh, the uh, COVID-19. But uh, we're going to be bunking, bunking down while we go through this. So those basic needs at home, if you are someone that need medicine, I hope you picked it up already so you can have uh, what you need at your house and then get prepared after it stops so, you know, to right. clean up your sidewalks and out front. Yeah, you know, I went to the same grocery store as you, sir, and they told me they were out of spinach because they said Eric Adams was here. He bought us out of spinach so he can make all his smoothies. Uh, just, just, just messing with you. But I want to talk about another serious topic right here because vaccinations, they were canceled all around the city today because of the storm. Of course, all of this on, a, on the heels of a new report that shows stark disparities in the rollout, specifically in communities of color. I'm sure you've seen the report. What did you make of that report so far? Uh, it's, it is really insulting and troubling, to to say the least. Uh, you know, I've, I've been on this show back in early January with a seven-point plan, 15 elected officials signed on to it. And at the heart of the plan was to use a real-time system. We should not find out after we distributed almost a million vaccine that we did not hit our target areas. Why were we using papers? in forms when we could have easily used a handheld device, monitor this in real time so we can make daily adjustments. I spoke with the mayor, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. I spoke with them several weeks ago, and I'm just surprised at the level of incompetency of doing this job. This is a real embarrassment and an insult to the communities that are in mm -hmm. high need. And Borough President, what do you attribute to this disparity? I know there's a large majority uh, of these communities that do still have a preconceived notion. There's a lot of skepticism about this vaccine. There's been a huge movement to promote awareness about the effectiveness of the vaccine. Do you think that's been working so far with what you're seeing on the ground? Uh, I know it has not. And, and yes, you are correct. Uh, there's a history, uh, everything from Tuskegee to right. bad experiences uh, with the medical institutions. But we should have factored that in. And if we would have had a real time system, we could have made the necessary adjustments. Why are we finding out after the first round of doses were distributed that, hey, we're having a problem? That is not how you run a government in the 21st century. We should have known where the problems were. Now we're talking about reaching out to credible messages, faith based institutions, open locations in NYCHA. That's the, an afterthought. Right. That's the same thing we did with the testing. You know, and, and, and Mr. Adams, we, we spoke to Mark Traeger this morning who talked about what happened in Coney Island this weekend, that there was this site that was open, 
all the people that were, that it was virtually empty. People had their appointments and they were canceled. So it seemed like there was an issue specifically in your borough as well and to get people vaccinated. And now there's more vaccination kits that are expected to come to Brooklyn and areas of the Bronx. When is that slated to happen? That's a good question. At the heart of this problem is communication, consistency. Uh, that is what we're missing. Uh, we should not find out information through uh, Twitter. Uh, we should be coordinating with our local electeds, our local leaders, community boards, all those who already have the infrastructure, all those who participated in the census. Uh, we should be coordinating uh, with these groups, and we're not doing that at all. This is just an ineffective communication plan, and it's really troubling uh, during a crisis like this. This city is, is a professional place, and it needs to run like that. Eric Adams, I do appreciate your time. Brooklyn Borough President, thank, thank you, you for being here this morning, okay? Be careful, no snowmen's out there. <laughs> I need that I need that smoothie Stay recipe. Safe. All right, thank you.